Number 74. A roll of 35 millimeter black and white photographic film contains about 0.27 grams of unexposed silver bromide, AGBR, before developing. What mass of Na2S2O3, a pentahydrate, so 5H2O, which is sodium thiosulfate pentahydrate or hypo in the photography world, uh, in 1.0 liters of developer? Um, is required to dissolve the AGBR as ags 2032 with the three minus. And then they give us a KF uh, a number as 4.7 times 10 to the 13th. What did I just read? <laughs> but we're, well, we're going to figure it out. Okay. So they gave us a mass of 0.25 grams of the silver bromide, and they just want to know how much mass of the hypo can we dissolve that silver bromide? Keep in mind that the silver bromide is 0.27 grams. And we want it to be dissolved as the complex ion Ag s 20323 minus because they gave us a Kf. Okay. Now, there's two things here. We've been doing tons of problems with solubility products, and AgBr is generally a solid, right? Unless it gets dissolved. So AGBR has a KSP formula. So I'm going to write that formula out. So let's see. We have AGBR, and that's a solid. This comes to equilibrium with the two ions that it's going to dissolve in, right? That's going to be the, the silver and the bromine. And AG always has a plus one charge. Bromine has a negative one charge when it's bound with the metal. They both are charges, so they're aqueous. And the equation's balanced, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick this KSP over with this equation. Okay. But now, how am I going to write another equation? They gave me another KF value. So, this is the complex I am that is going to be forming. Anytime that you're dealing with the KF value, you're always going to be forming, that's the F, you're going to be forming a complex ion. And in this case, the complex ion is the AgS2O3, 2, O three two three minus. Okie dokie. So let's just write that out. We're going to form this from its two components. Well, it's going to be the metal and then that polyatomic nonmetal. So let's see. If we're trying to form this compound, I need Ag and that's a plus one charge, right? Plus this S2O3, and it comes to equilibrium to form AgS2O32 with the three minus charge. Let's just, um, so a couple of things, let's just write that Kf value over here. So Kf is 4.7 times 10, to the 13th. And now let's try to get that charge on the S2O3. Keep in mind that we do have two of them. So I just have to put a two in front of here. And let's see, I need an overall charge of a negative three. I have a plus one charge. So this has to be a negative four overall, but there's two of them. So this would just be a negative two charge. Okay. Now they're both charges. So they're both aqueous. And same thing for the complex ion, aqueous. Now, acting you know, separately, they're two independent equations, but we have this happening in the same solution here because as this AGBr is disassociating into its ions, some of the Ag is going to be picked up and get used with the S2O3, right? Kind of the, the hypo component. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to bring these two equations together. Remember, if you have the same thing on opposite sides, they get canceled. So I have Ag plus on this side, and I have Ag plus on this side. So that gets canceled. How fun is that? So we don't care about that anymore. Goodbye. And nothing else that I can cancel out, so I'm just going to rewrite what I got. So I have Ag, Br, solid plus two S2O3s, 
2 minus, and this comes to equilibrium to form that complex ion, Ag, S2O3, 2, with a 3 minus charge. That's aqueous. And then we have the Br minus, and that's aqueous. Okay, so we brought these two equations together. So maybe I'll just go like this and just say that I added them. But now, what's going to happen with the k values? Well, remember, when we add equations together, we take these k values and we multiply them. So it's 5, oh, oopsie, I accidentally lost a point here. It's 5.0 times 10 to the negative 13th times 4.7 times 10 to the 13th. And that is our new k value that we're going to use for the equation. So 5 times 10 to the negative 13th times 4.7 times 10 to the 13th. So you get 23.5. Okay. Now, maybe, let's see, can I utilize some more space? Beautiful. Maybe I'll go over here. Okay. Now let's start plugging in numbers. Well, keep in mind that if we're using a K value, right, only gases and aqueous are allowed. So as far as our math is concerned, do we really care about this solid? No. So I'm just going to put a huge, you know, X around here. Don't worry about that. But now, 0.27 grams of the AGBR is developing. But I have a mass, and if I'm using K values, I have to get a molarity. Remember that molarity equals moles divided by liters. So the first thing is, is I have to do something with this amount. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the moles of it. 0 0.27 grams of AGBR. If I want to find the moles of AGBR, all I have to do, remember grams to moles, you just divide by the molar mass. So in this case, I'm just going to divide by whatever AGBR is on the periodic table. So I get 107.9 plus... 79.9, 187.8. So 0.27 divided by that, I get roughly 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third. So let me just plug this over here, times 10 to the negative third. But remember, we don't care about what this value is. Well, who else is going to help me out here? Well, remember that Ag, Br, broke down into Ag plus and Br minus. But since Ag plus is gone, and we don't care about Ag, Br, there's only one other one that we care about, and that's the bromide ion. So just use your ratios. If you have one Ag, Br, and in that one AGBR, you only have one bromine. The moles that you started off with here have to equal the moles of the bromide ion. So this would be 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third moles of Br minus. And thank goodness that they told us that it was in one liter. So this value divided by one would just be the same. So now I can just get rid of this and say, okay, hey, now I have this molarity for the bromide ion. And that's going over here. So I got 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third. Okay. Well, they want to know what mass of this whole hypo uh, compound is. Now, who is going to help us out? What component is this part of this or the one with the ag in it yeah it's just this component right this does not have the silver in it so this is what we're trying to solve for which means that i probably don't know what it is so i'm just going to label it x that means that i should know this amount but here we go we're going to assume that since this kf is so large i mean it's 10 to the 13th that means at equilibrium you probably have a lot of this. 
so much so that we're just going to use our ratios. If this is how much molarity you have of the bromide ion, and it's a one-to-one, -one, that's probably the same amount, or very, very, very close to the same amount that you would have in the complex ion, because that KF value, the formation constant, is so large. And now we have our values, we have our new K value, we have our X, so we can start plugging things in. Just know that you can put a 2X here, you know, follow the mole uh, ratio here, but since this is the only X value and no Xs are attached to any of these, you can just call this X. It's quite easier actually um, than calling this 2X, because then you gotta go back and times it by two. If we just call it X, whatever the answer is, that's the concentration of the S2O3. So let's go for it. K equals concentration of products over reactants. So we have these two products divided by this reactant, right? These are the same numbers. So I'm just gonna say that it's 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third, and that's squared because it would be this times this, it's the same number, over x squared because it's this raised to the coefficient. And now we have that new K value, which is 23.5. Now I'm realizing that I'm running out of space. So if you need to pause the video, but I'm just gonna get rid of this part because this is all the, you know, the information behind what we did. So bye-bye. And I'm just gonna bring this all the way up here. Now here's a trick. If on one side of your equation, you have both raised to the seconds, you can just take the square root of the whole thing. That will get rid of these seconds, but you gotta do it on the other side as well. So in this case now, we have equal to that value, 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third divided by X, you got rid of the squares, but now we just have to square root the 23.5, and I get 4.8477, 4.8477. Okay, cross multiply. Right, this is gonna be times by this, and then the top number is gonna be left alone. So 4.8477 times X equals 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third. Just solve for X, divide by 4.8477, 4.8477, this cancels out. And we're left with X equals uh, 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third divided by 4.8477, a lot of sevens. And I get roughly 2.966 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. And remember, that's what this was. So, the S2O3 two minus concentration is 2.966 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. Okay, but we still wanna find out the mass of the whole thing. So just pause the video because I'm just going to erase the two equations that we, you know, we don't need anymore because we have the one equation. So bye-bye. And I'm just gonna pull this up. And now I'm just gonna work down below here. So if we now know that the S2 minus concentration is 2.966 times 10 to the negative fourth, I can use some mole ratios, right? We still want to find out that mass. Now, this S2 O3 2 minus concentration is only going for just this concentration. Now, keep in mind that there are two sides that have the S2O3. There's S2O3 over here, and there's S2O3 over here. So we have to basically add them together because remember, this KF is so large. So there's gonna be some S2O3s on both sides of the equation. We have to add them up total. So the total 
concentration of the S2O3, 2 minus, is going to be the 2.966 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. That's coming from this. But now how much is coming from this? Well, use your mole ratios. Remember, this molarity was for the one whole compound, but inside the compound, there's two S2O3s. So it's a one to two relationship. So I have to times this value by two because there's two S2O3s out of one whole compound. So I'm gonna say two times the 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third. That was probably the trickiest part of this question. And now let's see what the total concentration of that is. So 2.966 times 10 to the negative fourth plus two times 1.4377 times 10 to the negative third. And I get 3.172 times 10 to the negative third molarity. This is the overall concentration of the S2O3 2 minus. Now, keep in mind that it's in one liter, so molarity equals moles over liter, but if you're, you're in one liter, the molarity equals the moles. So now I know that I have 3.172 times 10 to the negative third moles of the S2O3 2 minus. But now we have to get to this compound. Use your mole ratios. So all of like gen chem mole ratios coming back. Out of this whole hypo compound, how many S2O3s are there? Yeah, there's only one of them, right? I don't see this in parentheses as like a two or a three. So out of the one whole compound, there's only one S2O3. So if that's the case, if this is the amount of moles of S2O3, that's going to be the same amount of moles as the whole compound. So now you have that amount of moles of the Na2 S2O3 and then the pentahydrate. So let me just maybe make this a little bit smaller. 5H2O. We're almost there because now we have moles. We just have to go to grams, moles to grams. Moles to grams is, now if I just put the grams, grams of Na2S2O3.5H2O, we have to times by the molar mass. So we just have to find out what that molar mass is. So periodic table's out. Let's see what the molar mass of the hydrate is. We do have to include that 5H2O. So let's see, 22.99 times two, plus two times 32.06, plus three oxygens, plus 10 H2Os, so 10 times 1.008, and then five more oxygens. So two, so we're just gonna multiply it by 248.18. So this value times this value, that will get you the grams. So that times 3.172 times 10 to the negative third. And you get roughly two sig figs, 0 0.79. And that's how many grams total. So the tricky part was just knowing that you needed to take the S203 from both sides, mainly because you made that complex ion. So that's part of the equilibrium. I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I hope you guys are doing well. Good luck on your future tests and quizzes, and I will be talking to you in future lessons. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.